we do have a quorum. Thank you all for coming. You will notice you are all on mute. We're gonna ask you to stay on mute unless you are asked to speak. It's nice that the weather didn't affect this today. No excuses. Good to see all of you. Some of you I haven't seen in a while. Always a joy. Uh, Harper, hi, sweetheart. Haven't seen you in so long. My gosh, she's like grown up. Is she like going to college next week? Like, what's the deal? Sure. Sure, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> as long as we all pitch in to pay for it, you don't care. Well, she's probably. I'm sure she's smart enough too. No doubt. Right, Harper. Smart. Totally take over the world. And I say, let you. The world to be a better place if Harper took it over. Far more snacks for one thing. Yeah. Oh, uh, won't it be great when we can be together? Oh, no, I miss all of you. Okay, I think we have everyone who we're gonna start with. We have a quorum, so I think we can call this meeting to order. It's very good to see everyone. Pastor, I believe you're gonna start with prayer. I am. And let us pray. Holy, gracious and gathering God, we give you thanks for this opportunity to come together. God, we're grateful for technology that keeps us connected. And more than that, God, we're grateful for you who keep us connected in the love, grace, and mercy 
through Jesus. God, we pray for your Holy Spirit to be present, not only in this meeting, but in our lives. God, remind us that any time we gather for any reason at all, it is to follow. To follow your son who came to show us freedom, to show us love, to show us grace, to show us hope. God, remind us that these are values that permeate everything that we do, every decision we make, every step forward we take as a community, reaching out and caring for all. These things we pray in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. And I think Pastor is now going to share her screen with the report. And while she does so, we'll just do some housekeeping things. We want to um, make sure that everyone has a chance to be heard here and a, and a chance to, to vote. So how we're going to do voting and stuff like that is uh, everyone, when we ask for, for a motion or for a vote, just hold your hand up to your screen and keep it up until we give the all clear so we have a chance to count everyone's hands. If you have a question at any point during the meeting, please feel free to just send me a message on the chat function. You can send it just to me or you can send it to the larger group as well, whatever is gonna work best. Um, and for a proposing a motion or seconding a motion, we're gonna do the same thing of, we're gonna ask for someone to, to, to raise their hand and keep it up until we've kind of noted that we have what we need. Um, I think we kick this off then. What do we start with, Pastor? with a review of, and there's a typo in this already, of the 2020 um, council meetings uh, or annual meeting minutes instead of the 2019 one. So we have the minutes attached. Do we have any questions or notes on those minutes? Okay, do we have a motion to accept the minutes. I see Steve Dane for your uh, motion to accept the minutes as written. Okay, do we have a second? I saw Deb's hand first. Okay, all in favor of approving the minutes, raise your hand. Okay. I think we're good. Nona, you good? Any abstentions? Any nays? All right, that went pretty smooth. Uh, thank you, everyone. I think the next thing then is Pastor, you're gonna speak on your report here. Yep, and you all got it and read it. Um, I just wanted to also point out in your um, in your packet, and what I just scrolled past was some information from our synod. I ask you to read that at your leisure and to know that we are connected to something larger. Um, mostly, as you could tell in my report, thank you. This has been a year like no other. I believe the word is unprecedented. And I am a I am just beyond words to be part of this congregation at this time. Um, we, we never know what's going to happen, but we do know that we have a God that walks with us and leads us and guides us, not separately, but together. I want to thank you for your generosity. I want to thank you for showing grace. Thank you for showing love and care to our neighbors at this time. We've done a lot of really wonderful mission and ministry without our building. And I think that has been a gift and a joy and a reminder of who we are as God's people. And so thank you. Thank you for your vision. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your love of Jesus. And we look forward to this year where no matter what happens, building or no building, we continue being the gathered people for the sake of the gospel in this time and place. 
Okay. Thank you, Pastor. I think we're going to go through our ministry reports now from the different ministry teams. I think I kick that off. Again, all these are, I think we'll just be summarizing what's in the written report. I just kind of want to echo uh, what Pastor said, is it's been an extraordinary year in, in many ways. Um, and it's been really uh, uh, great to watch how the congregation has come together. And if anything can give us hope and makes me excited for what we're going to see in the coming year, it's how we've been able to come together in the past year. So I think that bodes really well. And so I want to say thank you to everyone here. That's, that's all for me. I think we move on to the next ministry report, which is worship and music. Um, well, normally we publish a, a, a membership and attendance report with the annual meeting. Attendance report uh, looks a little different this year than it has in years past. Um, so we don't have attendance numbers as we didn't have attendance uh, this year. So those here are here as well. So I think we can move on to the worship and music report, uh, okay. which will be Connie. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I can't think of another adjective to describe the year other than whirlwind. So <laughs> I agree and echo everyone else. Um, and I, I won't repeat what's in my report, but again, a heartfelt thank you to everyone on this team, uh, Pastor Bridget, and everyone who's jumped in to work so hard. Uh, choirs continue to meet via Zoom although we have to mute ourselves or we'd be in cacophony, <laughs> but, but we've continued to meet. So hopefully our voices will be preserved when we can get together again. Um, we began our outdoor services in June on Wednesdays and started at it on Sundays in July. And then September, we had to pull it back again because the numbers were up, but that was okay. We were doing that. And then November, we started um, our Zoom services and that was fabulous because that added another element to it, but it also added extra work to the people behind. Um, and thank you again. In October, we recorded our Christmas service ahead of time. And in November, we also did um, the mandala, which I really want to mention and highlight. It was fabulous. And it's on the front of the, um, the annual report. Again, anyone who was involved, it was, it was amazing um, community event. And um, in December, or excuse me, the end of November, we did our interfaith service host and we hosted. And we also did a new thing. We did a walk through the neighborhood evangelism or with evangelism and with social ministries. And it was wonderful. It's something that we want to continue every year. Um, worship and music continues to be a very viable committee and it's a pretty large group, but we thank everybody who's on the team. And um, I hope I haven't missed anything. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Connie, and everyone on the worship and music. I think next up uh, is Mr. Dan uh, with the out, his outgoing property report. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. So for those who haven't been by church in a while, it's still there. It's still there. <laughs> um, Hey, I'll make this real quick. Uh, we did get a couple new furnaces put in that we're looking forward to use here someday. Um, we uh, uh, lost three trees this year, uh, two to beetle kill and one the wind blew over. And um, uh, that was that was uh, that's been dealt with. And um, uh, yeah, we're going to change the garbage thing. We're getting a little too much neighborhood use. So we may put a lock on the garbage dumpster, but we want members to use it. So there will be a combo when this uh, happens. So don't get frustrated if, if you go to use the garbage and, and there's a combo lock on there. Uh, we'll figure out how we'll get that information to everybody. And if you drive by the church, there's a reconcile, reconcil reconcile in Christ uh, banner up on the sanctuary, and uh, you should check that out. And that's about it. All right, thanks, Dan. And it's probably important to note too that Dan is finishing his term on council, uh, his second three-year term. So I think everyone should say thank you to Dan for all the work he's been putting in. About, um, 
it's been a lot of work and we really appreciate it, Dan. All right, I think next up is evangelism. Uh, and that's uh, Mr. Bob Bishop speaking on that. Good morning, everyone. Uh, like everybody said, 2020 has been a very unusual year for us. <clears throat> But uh, I think we really, we've really been blessed by a lot of people who have um, done a lot of things to keep us in touch with each other, stuff like that. Um, one thing I forgot to mention in the evangelism report is the uh, Mill Creek Venture Out that we've participated in a couple of years, um, uh, eight, 2018 and 2019. But because of COVID, uh, that really wasn't happening. I had called them and uh, they said they're really not working with vendors uh, to do to do any of the things that uh, we normally have. So hopefully this coming year, things will open up and we can do that. Um, a couple of important things, I think uh, one is the little library and it's for the neighborhood. Uh, for people to get to know us, uh, borrow books, leave books, things like that. Um, I think when the playground is built, it would will probably be very popular with parents who bring their kids to the playground. Um, I think it's good outreach. Another thing is the event that happened December 22nd in the evening. It was a neighborhood event and uh, we got to know our neighbors, our LDS neighbors and others. And it was a good time of sharing at Christmas um, where because of COVID, we were pretty limited in ways to, to share and get to know people. Um, we took a lot of donations from people in the neighborhood for the Utah Food Bank and we gave crafts to the children. And I'm looking forward to doing that in the future. Um, I think it's something that we should, we should do every year. And that's about it. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks for that, Bob. Thanks for everything you did this year. I think jumping next is to Parish Life with Deb speaking on this. Hello, good morning, everyone. Go Packers. Uh, <clears throat> uh, anyway, um, a big thanks to Chris Enzel for being willing to lead our parish life committee um, since he was on council at the beginning of last year. Um, unfortunately, he had to resign. And so um, I was kind of the I was a rover. I, I, I didn't have, I was um, without an island. And anyway, so I got moved over to Parish Life from being with Jenny. And um, so um, a big thanks to Nona and, and Dorothy Darnell. And, you know, we weren't able to keep up the senior lunch um, program. Well, I shouldn't say we weren't able to keep it up. We weren't able to have lunches at church, but um, donations were made and, and you all know about that and it's in, in this little report. Um, and we will continue to uh, come up with ideas and ways to reach out to each other. Another thing that I, I almost forgot when I was writing the report, but what a amazing outreach um, we've had with one another and cards and notes and emails and just such a wonderful effort to keep in touch with everyone. So I praise God for that. Um, I think it's just helped keep our congregation vibrant and strong and everyone knows that they have people who love and care for them. Another very, 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 very fun event was our, I put it incorrectly in order, um, that my order was incorrect when I wrote the report. It was wine, women, and wonder. So, you know, the wine was the first part, but, you know, <laughs> some of us drank wine and some of us just whined. So, you know, it's, it's all good. But it was very, very fun to um, have Jenny lead us in that. And we are planning another one very soon. So I just, um, just thanks to everyone for participating. Um, and also, uh, Elisa, 
uh, is is our um, the parish life committee leader, and um, you know we really haven't met or anything so since I've been on. So you know, look forward to more things coming, and I'll take any any suggestions for how to plan any parish life events until we can meet again. Thank you, letting for letting me serve you. Thanks, Deb, and thanks for jumping in on this in the middle of the year, as if uh, any doing anything this year wasn't hard enough. Um, next, I think we have Marion speaking on the stewardship report. So we had three initiatives for last year, and we accomplished all three of them. We chartered uh, Troop 39. The feasibility study was completed with a with the idea that we need to go ahead and build and our furnaces and air conditioning were replaced in September. We've got three initiatives this upcoming year. One is to develop a team that will go forward with the playground. One is to develop a team to look at um, renovating and making our restrooms uh, compliant. And the third one is doing our digital stuff like this Zoom stuff and the things that are required for that. So even though we weren't able to meet, we were able to accomplish a whole lot, thanks to everybody that participated. Okay, thanks, Marion. I think next we have youth and faith formation, uh, which Jenny is gonna speak on. Muted. There we go. So mine really is to say ditto to all the other ministries. Um, everyone was creative in the way they found to do things. And it was, it's amazing to see people step up in other ways. I, um, you can kind of read the things we've done. Um, prayer partners, pastor, Bridget has just really taken the reins on Zoom and doing it in confirmation for the kids and, and mailing out Sunday school materials. Um, I want to say thank you to Di and Sue and everybody who went and sang over the summer um, and put together those packages and Deb and Lori Ledoux. Um, we, if you didn't know, we went to the kids house, um, all the youth and the children and gave them some ice cream and they sang, you are my sunshine. Um, it was a wonderful thing. And we decorated their doors and, um, hopefully we can get to do more of things like that um but it's been it's been a wonderful time to see people get creative and and be there for the kids still that is about it in that department thank you oh, awesome thank you jenny um we have the financial team report prepared by uh mr steve uh steve any any notes on this one Yeah, greetings, everybody. Merry Christmas. Um, as I mentioned in, in my report, it was strictly for fluff to let you know that the Finance Committee is very active. Um, my responsibilities pertaining to the, the finance, it was actually zero, which I am totally qualified for. But Bob will fill in with all of the specific details that you'll be interested in. But again, yeah, thank you to all of you who have made this year still a success. We move on. And, oh, and positively, I mean, even not getting together, Bob will reiterate this, I'm sure. We covered all of our expenses, even not meeting in person, so... To God be the glory and to you all be the thanks. Over and out. Thank you, Steve. And don't sell yourself short. I know you were involved in, in doing some work in this as well. Uh, and then one, one report that we didn't get into the written report, but we can give a minute to here is the social ministry. Uh, Gloria, I know you sent some notes over. Do you want to give a quick summary of social ministry for the year? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, 
I just wanted to I um, start from uh, January of last year when we started the um, Super Bowl food drive for um, the Utah Food Bank in January and February of last year. And it is also starting as of today for this new year, which we'll continue to do is the Super Bowl food drive. And in April, as part of the community supportive initiative, um, council approved and Tristan sent letters to three organizations. Uh, we support the Utah United Way and uh, Fourth Street Clinic and the Utah Food Bank. Um, and as you know, the three monthly checks were sent out, I'm assuming, in April, May, and June. Then in May, we had Family Promise um, guests continue to stay at the Christ United Methodist Church through the end of the year, but um, we were able to contribute and do volunteer hours. We provided that last week of May, 1st of June. In addition, all food donations were delivered to the Utah Food Bank and as well as the March baby bottle donations. And this has also continued throughout the year. Then in September, we had 60 blessing bags that we put together and delivered to the homeless people in the community, as well as 35 bags of chalk for the children uh, distributed so that they could write hopeful messages in the community. Then in December, um, family promised families were considered for Christmas food and gifts, but they were taken care of. So emails were sent to the volunteers suggesting gift donations. Then we had one more thing was the immigrant uh, cards, ILRS cards were collected and sent to adults and families new to our country. And again, just now in January, we're starting collection of diapers uh, and feminine hygiene products, which will be provided to Family Promise. So I wanna thank everybody and I'm hoping that I can be more participate and be involved more. And that Linda apologizes that she couldn't um, come to the meeting because she's uh, not a, got a good connection in the mountains. So we're hopeful that we can do some good things this coming year. All right, thanks, Gloria. And now with the exception of one who will be speaking, uh, we, that's the, the, your OSLC council team. So uh, all, everyone who just spoke has been putting in an extraordinary amount of work this past year um, to keep the gears running um, in, a, in a way that we've never had to before. So a big thank you to everyone who spoke here and everyone who's been helping with those ministry reports. And now for the really fun part of this uh, presentation, a budget report, uh, Mr. Bob. Take it away. There we go. I got it. Yeah, and uh, we'll see if you can stay awake. But so this is the budget report, and I assume that you're all seeing my screen. Is that true? Okay. Um, this is going to be pretty much the same uh, type of, of presentation that we did at the budget forum. And because we had the budget forum, which was very well attended this year, ironically, um, we're not going to go down into the weeds with all the detail on the budget. Um, you know, you, you all have a copy of the detailed budget in your, um, in your packets in the annual report. And, and many of you um, sat through the budget forum. And in fact, you had the ability to download that uh, on the same page where you looked at the, uh, the annual report. So I'm just going to kind of go through this as quickly as I can. Um, the first thing that uh, we're going to do, if I can wake up my machine here. Uh, and if I could, Bob, while you're getting that ready, I uh, just want to note to everyone. So if you have questions during this, just shoot me a message during this. So we, so Bob can keep uh, speaking on whatever slide he's on, and then we'll, we'll kind of address him at the end of his uh, couple slides here. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So so the, the first part of this is just going to be um, a recap of the year. Um, and as uh, Steve mentioned, um, you can tell from the numbers uh, that our income and expense were pretty darn close. Um, and if you're not a numbers person, you can tell from the picture uh, that they were very close. Um, so basically, we ended the year with a surplus, which is always a good word, um, of $485, which isn't huge, but, but we did basically break even. And in a year when we did not have 
in-person attendance. I think that's that's a tremendous thing. And, and I wanna offer my thanks to all of you that, that, uh, that supported the ministries of our saviors. Some kind of things I would point to um, in the midst of all this, and, and I think Gloria referred to this as well, um, we decided to use $10,000 that we had um, as unused sabbatical funds, money that had accumulated while Pastor Jeff was with us. Um, and we funded uh, the community support initiative. That money was distributed to the agencies that, that Gloria mentioned. Um, and in fact, in, in addition to that $10,000, we had members of the congregation who stepped up and gave additional money for that. Great thing. And, and uh, that was a, a really neat uh, experience. Uh, we were able to provide some stability um, for our staff members. Um, and that is because we were uncertain about what was coming up and going on uh, in those first few months of the, of the pandemic and not meeting. Um, there was a decision made to basically offer staff members um, the same salary they had been earning, um, even though hours may be reduced. Um, and so hopefully uh, that allowed uh, the staff to, to have that level of certain, uh, me, certainty in a time of uncertainty. Uh, Steve mentioned in his written report that we streamlined some business practices uh, to, uh, to do better and more effective uh, business, if you will. Um, and uh, that included changes to our software that we've been using and, and just some, uh, again, streamlining. Um, as I mentioned already, we did the, uh, we were able to break even with our revenue expenses for the year, which is a great thing. And once again, we um, utilized the ministry-based budgeting where we um, uh, enlisted the help of all of the ministry teams in setting goals, objectives, and activities for the year. And, and those activities, goals, and, um, and objectives then translated into the budget that, that we uh, anticipate needing to make those things happen. So that was kind of the highlights of 2020. Um, I don't know, Tristan, have you gotten anything I need to respond to before I move on? Okay, so let's, let's jump, oh. It's... Sorry, um, I was trying to chat in the chat and I was too slow. Just a quick question about the, um, uh, percentage giving that we do for um, charities and so on, uh, the, the ministries that we support, uh, built into that was a certain percentage that was going to the scholarship fund. Is that still happening also? Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, we, were, we were able to, what we did early on is because of the uncertainty, we again locked our giving in at the levels that had occurred the last few months of last year and this year. Um, and then periodically I reviewed that to see how we were with the percentages that we had pledged. And we turned out um, just giving a standard amount, we turned out very, very close to what it would have been if we were percentage based. And yes, that did include the scholarship as well. Okay, so let's, let's jump into um, next year. Um, this year, whatever year we're in, 2021. And um, what I'd like to, again, point out to you is the details that are behind what I'm going to be showing you on the next couple of screens are in your annual report. And when, in fact, this body votes on the budget, it is the detailed budget that's in your annual report that, that will be uh, voting on and hopefully adopting and putting into practice. So first of all, um, and this is a screen that we've used in past years as well, um, just a breakdown of visual, you can kind of see um, what the distribution of our budget um, is across the various ministry teams, um, you know, and, and the, the three big pieces of the pie that you see, um, of course, the facilities and property, keeping the, the doors open theoretically, um, you know, is, is a big piece of that. Um, and then uh, the good news is that we, we spend a good portion of, our, of our, um, our budget on worship and music and social ministry. So this is, this is our, our internal um, and our, uh, in most cases, our external uh, view uh, so far as what we give away our social ministry. 
Um, the, the percentages from year to year um, have not changed appreciably. They're, they're within a point or two of what they've always been. Um, but I thought it just gives you kind of a visual on, on um, where the money goes. Okay, seeing none, moving on. Um, the few things that I would comment about as we look at the budget for 2021, um, our proposed operating budget, uh, that is our expense budget, is uh, $296,000. Um, our proposed revenue, we anticipate having the following components, and that is um, regular offerings, interest, facility use. We anticipate coming in at about $273,000, and we are budgeting for potentially a use of um, prior year's surplus funds of up to $23,000. Um, you'll see as I get to the next screen that we, we budgeted for potential use of surplus this year and, and did not need it. So I think, you know, the, we've got the buffer there if, if we do need it. And again, we're following the same process in building this year's budget as we did in the prior years, and that is the ministry team approach, where the numbers that you see actually came from the ministry teams and reflect their um, anticipated practices and, and uh, activities. Some things that impact the budget for this year, uh, you'll note that the uh, generosity initiatives, uh, specifically that of the restroom upgrades and the digital presence are factored in here. Um, those are, are carried on the detail line items uh, at $10,000 each. And um, there is a proposal made from the personnel committee went through executive and ultimately to the council um, that we uh, offer the salary increase to the staff of 2.7% for this coming year. So those are two, um, two significant things um, if we look at the 2021 budget. And so the numbers I'm going to show you are a summary of what's in your handout, what's in the annual report. Um, and so what I've done is I've just summarized down to kind of the ministry team level. And as we've done in past years, you can kind of compare what happened this year, which are the green boxes, with what we are proposing for next year. Now, if you want to compare apples to apples, this column is the budget that this body agreed on at this meeting last year. This blue is the budget that we are proposing for 2021. But then just so you see, the actual amount that was brought in as income and was spent in 2020 is in the second green column. So it's not at all unusual for us to have budgets both on the income and the expense side that exceed the actual. And that's what we saw this year. Um, you know, we had budgeted 295, we brought in 254, we budgeted 295, we brought in 253, um, or we spent 253, excuse me. So as we look at the budget for this coming year, um, we're basically looking at a very small increase in the budget amounts, and that is $528. Um, and the areas that changed the most, you can, you can spot in this change column, um, the, the big change on the administrative, the personnel costs, of course, is uh, our decision to, uh, to, to not have a financial administrator. Uh, that was Debbie's position. And so uh, that, that is reflected in the savings in this line here. The administrative costs went up. If you look at your detail, you'll see that came from uh, the inclusion of the, um, uh, of the um, digital presence upgrade. Um, other changes are nothing you're earth shaking in here. Um, in the property facilities and property, um, this is where the um, the restroom upgrade uh, monies are going. But you may remember that last year we had fifteen thousand dollars in there for the furnaces. So the actual change uh, in the facilities and property budget was was pretty minimal. I think that's about. It are there any questions or comments or just can you get any chatter on your chat box there? I don't think it, anything. 
Oh, Steve's here. down in the corner. I see. Is that Steve? Steve, are you making a motion to approve this as written? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to share with you the recommendation of, of the both the council and the staff as we review this is that this budget appears to be uh, reasonable. It's consistent with our past commitments and ongoing stewardship mission. And um, so having said that, go for it. Okay, so we have a motion from Steve to approve that. I think now's the time we can open it up as well. Any other questions or comments, uh, send them over my way. Okay, do we have a second to the motion to approve this budget? Okay, I saw Marion's hand first. All righty. All in favor of approving the 2021 budget as presented, please raise your hand and keep them up. Thank you, I think everyone need. Any people abstaining? I see no abstentions. Any nays? Okay, I don't see any there as well. So I think that has passed. I think we've seen some movement on the chat, but I'd like to reiterate, thank you, Bob. That's a tremendous amount of work that goes into not just presenting this report every year, but getting us to the place where we can have a coherent report like this, uh, which requires daily work. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda uh, is filling council roles. Um, we had uh, two people leave council this year, as we said, Dan Burrell is leaving, uh, Chris Ensel has left as well. Um, and um, Heather um, also left and Steve Johnson is filling in the role of his financial uh, secretary. So thank you, Steve, for that. Uh, so a big, big thank you to, to Dan and the Telfers for their service on that. Um, next time you see them, uh, say thank you for sure. Um, we have one nomination from the nominating committee to join council for the next year, and that is Lynn Pridin. Uh It's very exciting. Um, so uh, we adopted some uh, changes to the constitution a couple of years ago at this meeting, I believe, where we have can have between eight and 12 people in council. So we don't have, uh, we're fine on the set number of people we need to have to stay within the constitution. So we have one from Lynn, do, um, before we go forward to vote on that, do we have any nominations from the floor? Okie dokie. Do I see a motion to approve the nominating committee's proposal of having Lynn, uh, on the council, Connie, I saw your hand first. Thank you. Do I see a second for that one? Ooh, I saw Marty first. This isn't as exact as it is in the past, but we'll go with it. Thank you. Uh, any other notes or questions or discussion on that? Marty, you have something? Yeah, just a question about the financial secretary position. You said Steve Johnson is taking over. Is that just temporary? Oh. As, as, as temporary as any of these positions can be, I don't, <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think for the, as, as, as the kind of set financial secretary. Okay, but that's a position that if um, Steve vacated it, someone else could, the council would just appoint. That's not a position to be elected. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, so not, not technically a member of council. Okay. I think that's a good question. Uh, so thank you, Lynn, for willing to serve here. Let's see, I think we have first and second. So all in favor of uh, appointing Lynn onto council, please raise your hand. All right, thank you. Any abstentions? I don't see any and any nays. 
I don't see any as well. Thank you, Lynn. Look forward to working with you here. Okay, that was the last voting item that we have here. I um, And we don't have any new or unfinished business on the agenda. Um, so we're getting close to wrapping up. So if there's any other items that uh, people wanted to bring up at this point, now would be a good time to, to message me or, or, or to bring them up here. I know why Steve's raising his hand. Steve, you can come off mute for this one if you'd like. I move that we adjourned. And it's so good to see you all. It is Before very we do, I want to give a shout out publicly to Tristan. Oh. For all of his hard work as council president this year. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And praise Jesus. Um, yeah. So Tristan, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, and thank you to this council. Uh, truly remarkable is the only and magnificent are the only words I have. And um, yeah, I'm going to start to cry. So thank you. Thank you all. And then I, I agree with Steve. Thank you, Pastor. And yes, it's been a, a tremendous team effort this year. Thank you, Tristan. All in favor of adjourning the meeting. Looks pretty clear to me. Any abstentions? I don't see any. And any nays? Okay, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you everyone um, for, I know uh, it's tough sometimes to add on more Zoom meetings on top of what else we have going on, but we do appreciate everyone coming here. It's, it's, uh, also like to give a shout out to Pastor who's put in an extraordinary amount of work. None of the work that we've done in the past year, we uh, detailed when we had the job posting for her. So she's definitely gone above and beyond in, in every way that we would have expected. So thank you, Pastor. And I believe we're gonna close with the Lord's Prayer. We are. You can go off mute if you want, so it's a holy cacophony, um, or you can stay on mute if that bothers you. So either way. <laughs> but let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy be name. Done. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come. Thy will be, will be done on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this give us day, day our, our daily bread. bread. And forgive, and forgive us, us our trespasses as we, as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not, not into temptation, temptation, but deliver, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine, For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and, power and the power and, glory and the glory forever, forever and, ever. and ever. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wonderful, faithful servants of God. So blessings, enjoy the snow day. Yeah. Thank you as well. Good to see everybody. Yeah, thanks, Justin. Thanks, everybody. That's great. Thanks.